So welcome everyone. I've got an amazing guest today. Her name is Erica Gutierrez and she's in Miami, Florida. She just graduated college and we're so lucky to have her today to share her story with us. So thanks for joining us, Erica. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here and to come on and just share it with all of you today. This is great. So you know what would be awesome, Erica, if if our listeners can hear what your biggest struggle was growing up or if it's even now? Yeah, so my biggest struggle growing up is kind of what fuels me to do everything that I do now. And it was, it kind of just started like, when I was young, I was always very creative and I loved, you know, we were talking earlier before doing the podcast, I taught myself how to use a green screen. Like I loved making new projects. Like I would write songs and just growing up, I was really creative. But then as I started going, like growing older, becoming more, getting in a, a sense of identity of who I was and like, you know, growing up, I started getting like a lot of uh, wrong and non-encouraging feedback from the from my external environment so I was dealing a lot with like judgment and just like getting rejected and kind of was always told like oh you don't sing good or you don't dance good or you don't try hard enough so this kind of turned into like um just me growing up starting to doubt myself and it turned into just like this belief in my mind that when I reached like an older when I was already an adult and or not an adult, but like a teenager in high school, I started to believe these things that I actually was not good enough, that I would never be good enough. And so it took me down this really dark path where I just made very bad decisions and just always felt like I would never be good enough. And so that actually ended up going into, you know, like different problems with mental health and like anxiety and just a lot that I kind of uh, hid away. So the, the most, the struggle was kind of just dealing with the, with everything at the time and kind of like the narrative that I had kept in my mind, um, as well as finally, like trying to believe in myself and like trying to do something bigger. I wasn't able to do so at the time, like in high school. I got it. I got it. And and sorry to hear that. That sounds like that must have been really hard to go through when you were when you were younger. And how how did that affect your life? How did that impact your life on a on a day to day kind of level? Yeah. So I I I was still a dancer. Like it caused me to be very inconsistent and unpassionate. So in my mind, since I did have this narrative of like, oh, I'll never be a good dancer, or I, my teachers told me to not talk, I talk too loud, like they tell me to be quiet. So this actually caused me to like dim my light and always kind of try to uh, shift depending on the situations that I was in. So like, when I was in my dance practice, I would, I would go, but then I would quit. So I would do dance, you know, I started when I was four, I did it till I was like eight and then I quit cause I got discouraged. And then I did it again in middle school, but then I started hating it because I never thought I would be a good dancer and I would compare myself to the other dancers. And I remember in high school when I was a JV, so I never even made it to varsity. Like I always wanted to be a better dancer, but I would just look in the mirror in my dance practice and just be like, I'll never do this. Like I would just be like, I can't dance. Like I would not go full out. So my dance teachers instead this turned into a really bad scenario because they thought I wasn't caring and they would always just be like Erica you don't care try harder like you're not doing the choreography but it's just because I didn't believe in myself so it just caused me to continue to just follow this fake narrative that I was not good enough to express and like that I would always be judged and so I ended, I ended up quitting dance I quitted singing I quit doing all of that and I went like four years, five years, not having any passion in life until finally I came across shuffle dancing and I was able to kind of start new and give myself a chance to, okay, maybe I'll be good enough at this. And ever since I kind of allowed myself to rewrite that story and give myself another chance to try something new, then that's kind of where it all changed from there. That's awesome. Cause that, that actually leads into the next question is how did you learn how to manage that and overcome that struggle? So it sounds like shuffling was a big part of it. 
shuffling was kind of that new entryway that was like, all right, Erica, you're, I wanted more at the time. This was two years ago, 2018, and I was an engineering major. I still had not switched into math. I still had not done yoga or dance. I was kind of just partying on the weekends and, and studying. And so when I was on Instagram and I came across people shuffle dancing, it was electronic music. And I was like, you know what, let me give myself a chance. It was this uh, band cycle, my inspiration. And so I was like, she looks so free. Like this reminds you of me when I was younger, before I started telling myself all these things that I, that I couldn't create, like even in, in early high school, early middle school, I was dealing with this, uh, these false beliefs and like insecurity, but I also wanted more. So I would tell myself I was like 14 and I was like, I want to start a blog, but I'd never be able to do it because nobody would read it or nobody would even like it. And so I wouldn't do these things until finally 2018, I came across this girl and I just, every time I came across her post, I was like, I want to live like this creative, this freedom. And she would, she would always write in her things, like whatever you see in me, you see in yourself. And I was like, wow, like I see this powerful dancer who's confident, who's so secure, who just shows up without any, like, any um, shame of who she is and you know what I want to do this like let's just start doing it so I started practicing playing music again and I didn't know what I was doing but in between studying I would play music and dance and I just little by little even if it was like three minutes or five minutes I started feeling myself kind of change and eventually from there you know it turned into I would never have expected to turn shuffling into like kind of like uh, literally a business where I am right now but not only that it was just kind of the ability to open myself up to putting myself out there one more time and this time telling myself it's not about the external world accepting my art or it's not about proving myself to anyone it's kind of just allowing myself to express for the first time that's awesome that's so cool and I, I'm so glad that you found that that sense of purpose and that outlet and so you could just be free and just really live the way you wanted to live that you felt that you were inside and let your light really shine and for our listeners just so they know how long did that take for you to to make that transformation from feeling anxious and maybe you know when you were at your lowest was did it ever even creep into depression at all did you yeah. So, so this is actually something. So when I was going through these hard times in high school, I started now like failing class. So I was just so over it. Not only was it the dancing that I felt bad about, but it was just my every day in school. And I started just, I, I was like so depressed. Like I would come home and cry because I was just like, I hate school. I hate everything. And this was like, four years and I remember even my own friends like I wouldn't know how to tell my friends that I felt down or that I felt like all, like every uh the mostly the inner voice in my head how I was just like when I was depressed it was just like you you're failing classes all you do is drink all you're ever gonna do is this you're not gonna be a good dancer kind of just inner critic always telling me all this um and so I started misbehaving to the point where all my teachers kind of just would send me to the office and I was in a private school and I got into trouble. And so they sent me to a psychiatrist and it was like a, a private uh, school. So they were allowed to do this where it was like, you, you're on this probation. Um, and I got uh, diagnosed with uh, dystemia. And my psychiatrist was telling me at the time how I was going to be depressed for the rest of my life, mostly because of the fact that I was always, he didn't say it specifically like that, but he was like, dystemia is a form of depression that's like long term. And all you're doing is partying. All you're doing is basically I, all, I, all I remember was leaving the psychiatrist's office and literally thinking my life was going to end. Like, I left that office literally telling myself that I'm going to be depressed for the rest of my life and that there was no other option. And that meeting, I was still in school at the time, 
but that just was the, this was when I was 17, senior year of high school. That just completely just shattered me to the point where I gave up on school. And a couple months later, I got kicked out. And so I had to start halfway of senior year of high school in a new school. And I was depressed still, and I skipped school. And then when I got to college was when I finally said I was going to start new again. And when I did make the decision to, you know, start doing things that I loved, whether it was dancing or singing, you know, there was still times where I would feel depressed. So I don't want to say it's like a magic cure of, oh, I got out of it and I'll never again do have to deal with it. So it wasn't until a year ago that I was already happy shuffling and, you know, I was growing following and I had people telling me I was like motivating and stuff. And that's when I noticed, okay, so I reached a point in my life where I'm developing routines, you know, I'm into personal growth, but I didn't notice that what I was actually doing was I became so accustomed to no longer being depressed because I had something that I finally made me happy, that I became so attached to being happy that I actually became very anxious. And so I got into a path now that I was just struggling with crazy anxiety. And so this was a year ago, and I can continue that story, but basically- the Please do, yeah, please. The, the, oh, you want me to continue from Sam? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, so this was, this was about a year ago. So I was already, you know, like, I guess people knew me as like a motivational uh, speaker on LinkedIn because I share stuff. And so I was still in college and I was very young in my mind. In what, just one year, I, I learned so much about, you know, like content creation. And I had this idea of like, oh, now that I want to be a mindset coach and I want to teach people to shuffle and find their expression, like that means I have to be perfect and that means I need to be the example. And so what I didn't notice is that this idea, this like false illusion in my head was leading me to get into patterns where I was super on top of my game, like, but then I would burn out. And so when I was dealing with these negative emotions where I was burning out and I was just very, um, like not motivated again, I would get myself worse because I would say, I'm not allowed to feel this way. And so now it wasn't kind of like, a, oh, I'm depressed. I don't know what to do. It was kind of like, I'm avoiding the fact that I'm anxious and I'm trying to cover it up with self-help when I'm avoiding the real problem. So then I got into therapy and I started talking about this stuff of high school and how I overcame getting kicked out and, you know, revisiting these experiences and allowing myself to kind of heal and face what I had held in for so many years allowed me to build this relationship with myself that it allows me to now view my mental health in a way that it's no goal of, oh, I need to do my self-help and I need to do this because I need to be on my A game all the time. It's kind of like, now I've learned, okay, through therapy, it's like, how can I become aware when something's off? How can I become aware of how I'm talking to myself, how I'm dealing with it and be there for myself. But now also accept that what I'm going through is okay. I'm not um, bothering anybody when I'm going through a downtime. I'm not disappointing anybody. And when I got to that conclusion of, oh, it's okay to be down, that's truly when now I was able to step into my expression where now it's like, okay, yes, I'll express my inspiration and dancing what I love but also when I'm going through my down phases this is also what I love and I still have to continue sharing and connecting with people because that's what brings us all together that was amazing I'm so glad you shared that Erica that was that was incredible I think thank so many people that are like listening really just speaking about that <laughs> yeah no it's it's that thank you for sharing that 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 was amazing and I think everyone that's listening can relate to your story and how, how long someone may be thinking, well, that's awesome. I'm so glad that, that Erica got through that and, and is giving herself, cutting herself some slack. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, always being, like you said, on your A game every single day. It's just, this is an ongoing lifelong journey that we're all on. And, and that's beautiful and normal and perfect. So how long did it take you to kind of get to that point where you thought, okay, I, I feel really good about this. I'm going to have some good days and some days that are not so good. And that's okay. This is all just 
just a part of life. How long did it take you to get to that point? If someone's listening and saying, gosh, did that, did that take her six months or six years? Or how long, how long is it going to take for me? And I'm just pretending I'm the listener. Yeah, that's a great question. I feel that a lot of people try to kind of compare like, oh, this took this long for this person. Maybe it'll take this long for me. I really, when it comes to, to this, to, to setting your mind to, you know, kind of either whether it's making different choices or learning something new or starting small, definitely I feel it's more about the energy rather than the time. Um, my personal development journey and my mental health, uh, well, mental health, I was born, you know, that's something every day I take care of. But like when I began to educate myself on mental health, um, the personal development came first. And so I was learning routines. I was learning, you know, waking up, make, doing my bed, eating healthy. And I was still uh, feeling a little bit of that mental health where I was still anxious and I was still um you know, some days feeling really depressed, not knowing what to do. The time wise, it, it took about, it took one year of therapy from last year to really overcome anxiety to the point where now um, I, I deal with it very healthy, where now if I have, for example, when I started my podcast, I had all this anxiety and it was like, I still wasn't, this was about like six months ago. I still wasn't aware of it because I was like still paralyzed. So whenever I wanted to, it took me like, two months to actually publish it once it was done just because I had anxiety, but I didn't think it was anxiety. I thought it was normal. I was like, oh, I'm just doubting myself or, oh, I just need to have the perfect podcast cover. But I was really just paralyzed. Like I could not upload it. I could not publish it because it was the anxiety. So it that, that definitely t still took a lot of time. And, you know, I've kind of been these couple of months, I ended therapy last month and this month has been great to where now I manage it. So now it's like where I'm able to overcome it, but it's kind of an everyday, an everyday practice. So I don't want to say like, oh, it'll take this time to this time. Like, you know, um, who knows, maybe something happens and I'm depressed again next month. But what what's going to count? What's going to count is the amount of time that you've invested in putting together practices and knowing what your triggers are and knowing how to cope with it. Putting time into that is going to actually help on those times when you're not able to. So for example, the next time something triggers me and I get anxious. So if, if it's something where I want to like, sometimes like if I want to share something that means a lot to me, and back in the day, when, like when I first started creating content, I would get consumed by the anxiety. But now I'm able to walk myself through it and like analyze the thought and say, okay, is this my ego or is this um, my anxiety usually coming from the ego or is this like my highest self? And usually when it's a thought like, oh, this isn't good enough, I pause and I'm like, all right, is this good enough for my friends? Is this good enough for my family? Okay, then that's my anxiety talking. So being able to develop these um, practices and it's a lifelong, lifelong, um, lifelong journey. Like I'm still learning every day. I learn these new crazy like tech, not even techniques, but like I'm reading books by like Joe Dispenza on how to heal the body, like through our own biological like emotions. And so it just, being committed to educating and to make your own decisions is the most important when it comes to, to that. Absolutely. Completely agree. Thanks for sharing that. That's, that's really helpful. So I, another question that I'd love to hear from you is how, how is that struggle of anxiety and some depression, how has that made you a better person? It's, it's definitely made me who I am because it's, it's definitely allowed me to be in positions that I've had to overcome certain areas of not life, but myself. And it's definitely given me a, a perspective on what life feels like when you're struggling and when you feel hopeless or when you feel anxious um so definitely i've learned i feel the most experience the most lessons i've actually learned through my life have been in those dark moments where i was struggling with depression and anxiety and mostly in those moments where i found that i was struggling with myself 
and it has given me a lot of strength to notice you know when you look back and and ask yourself like you you went through that situation so you get you gain that strength and the next time you come across a situation although it feels like you don't have what it takes you feel like you're hopeless like there's no way out there always is and it's taught me that as long as we stay um being our number one best friend through it all like even as down as we feel as long as we promise to be there for ourselves and bring ourselves up no matter how much time we need to like be down and how much time we need to ourselves like at the end of the day we make that decision to come out because no one's going to do it for us and mostly anxiety has taught me that because I'll get into like for example if I'm like really anxious and I start doubting myself and telling me like I don't it's happened many before when I got anxious it was mostly I would get more anxious because I would drill myself with the thought of like I have no friends, nobody's here for me, nobody wants to hear my problems and it was kind of just like a like spiral. But every time I got out of that, it was just like a whoa, like it really is all in my mind and although at times it seems like I have no control, when I'm able to come out of it, I just have so much more clarity and more appreciation and more gratitude for the things that really do matter. Because, you know, sometimes we get really, really stuck and we're focused so much on the problem or on what's missing or on what, on what we could have done differently or what we did wrong. But when we notice that instead of we let go of that idea and we're able to kind of just bring ourselves back out of where we are, where we are without attachment, to, to that, then we're able to just bring in so much more opportunity to grow and to learn from our lessons. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's so true. I know for me personally, it was the same. It built up a lot of resilience and confidence that I knew it wouldn't last forever. So that's how it kind of helped me. When I got through the first really awful depression, I thought, I, can, I, I can't believe I got through this. I mean, when I was in it, I thought, this is never going to get better. I'm never going to get better. And when I did, I thought, wow, I, I, can, I can get through anything now if I got through that. So then if there was another time where I kind of felt like it was, you know, going downhill, I thought, no problem. I got this. I can do it. No, so that really, I, I can relate to how you, how you felt and how it strengthened you. And so here's, here's the question I always love asking guests. So if someone had a magic wand, right? Little Harry Potter whew, magic wand, and they could just wave it and make all of your struggles disappear, would you? Or would you say, no, I'll, I'll take a pass on that little magic spell. And I'm curious why or why not? I would take a pass on that magic spell because what it would be then is, is implying that there is something in my life right now that, I have to change but that the control to change it is outside of me and so if I were to accept that I would be telling myself that I don't have the control to change my reality right now and change whatever it is that I feel is wrong so personally I like the question you asked me because it's making me realize like wow if there is something right now that I don't want in my life I have that magic spell and I'm the one that's going to have to do something, whether it, if I can't get rid of it, then how can I change my perspective for it? And if I can't change my perspective, how can I learn from it? And that's, that's the thing. There's many things in my life and circumstances where I wished I would have changed. And those were the times where I was in the most anxiety, the most depression was when I was just constantly telling myself that things around me weren't going to change, that I wanted someone to come and take me out of there, that I wanted something something magical to come and change my life but when i realized i really had all it took inside of me that's when it, that's when it changed yeah that's so great and I, I i i really love that answer because you've expressed it in a way really unique everyone else has answered it to my surprise and, and in a good way everyone has said I, no, I don't want that that magical help because this has made me who I am and it's made me a much better person. And, and you've said that too, but you even threw in something kind of magical. And in Hollywood, they'd say like pixie dust, right? <laughs> you, 
and that's that's that we all have the magic already within us that's and that's so true we do so that is so cool and i i, I really appreciate the way you you shared that answer with us and 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 so i i guess the last question is if someone that's listening now is really really going through a hard time whatever the struggle is what advice would you have for them I would definitely start off with saying don't compare yourself to anyone else's struggle or don't compare yourself to anything else that you're seeing that you think just is not going for you or you feel that you're just not capable of that. Don't compare yourself to the external, but rather ask what what else, what is it really that that we're going through and if we're making it easier on ourselves or we're making it harder on ourselves and the one thing that i always i always the most important lesson that i've learned through my struggles with mental health really is in the end is being our number one best friend and what that means is talking to yourself like you would a friend so when you do find yourself in that dark time and you do find yourself stuck but are you are you making it worse are you telling yourself it's never going to be over are you telling yourself that you're not capable of more but switching that instead and talking to yourself like you talk to your friend so i'm asking pretending that your friend is asking you oh i'm in this situation what would i do talk to yourself in that way that you can you know you can get out of it you will find the light and as long as you make that decision to overcome whatever it is that's in front of you regardless of what gets in the way then that's what's going to make the impact. That's, yeah, incredible. I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much, Erica, for being, uh, just being a guest today, sharing your story and spending time with us. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you. So if this has helped you today, please leave a comment below and let us know what part was your favorite. And if you'd like to get um, uh, in touch with Erica, are you open to share your socials? Yes, please go ahead and connect with me. If anything reached out to you, you want to ask anything or you, you want more advice, definitely reach out to me at Erica Gutierrez on Instagram and on LinkedIn and my podcast Beyond the Shuffle. And if you are looking for another way to bring some energy, some excitement into your life and you want to learn how to shuffle, you can go learn some shuffling and I'm happy to answer any questions. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Erica. And just so you guys know, I've actually tried and I'm the worst dancer on earth. I have like three left feet. If anything could be worse than two, I've got it. So, and I, I watched um, some of Erica's videos. They're amazing. And exercise is proven scientifically to reduce anxiety and depression. So it, I, I watched it and I was dancing around. I think I even remember I had just kind of having a rough morning. You know, I didn't sleep well. And I saw your video and you're like, hey, and I thought, that sounds fun. And I just started, well, horribly shuffling, but it did. It helps a lot. It felt great. And I know uh, for you who's watching this or listening to this, check out Erica Gutierrez, Beyond the Shuffle. It's amazing. You're going to love her. Thank you. I appreciate you.